journey of partnering as senders. I think really a, a short way to describe our journey would be simply a journey from letting to sending. I'll just give you a little um, snapshot into what I'm talking about. I really appreciated what Brother Walter here this morning as he gave a... Um, he, he referenced the, the setting he was a part of at the time, and I think we all, maybe some of you are in the same setting you grew up in and still there, and maybe some of us, that setting has changed somewhat. And for us, that setting has changed. But I really appreciated the way I felt that Walter honored that setting, because all of our past have shaped us and brought us to where we are. And so I'm not ashamed of that past. And there's things there that's, that has been very valuable and continue to be valuable. So I want to honor that. And then just, just because we're different, we're at a different spot now, I in no way want to dishonor that. Because that's been part of our journey. I thought of, as I was thinking about this sending, and just about partnering, I thought about some a scripture in John chapter 13, this is in the context is following Jesus' teaching um, regarding foot washing. And there it's at, at the end of, of Jesus' time with his disciples here on earth. And in the 16th verse, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that sent greater than he that sent him. And I had to think about us as a sending church that we're also sent. We're, we've been sent by God to minister, to fulfill that, um, that great commission of taking His Word to all nations. And so whether we stay stateside and we're the actual senders into other cultures, or whether we go, we are still sent. And we need to re remember our own recognition, I think, of that being sent and how we respond to that reflects our recognition. How we respond to that sending, whether we stay here or whether we go, that will re reflect our belief on whether we're sent because we are just delegates for Jesus Christ. He lives in us, but we're just delegates. We are not the, the one. We are not greater than the one that sent us. So just a brief history of our, just a, few, a little timeline of dates. Um, I communicated some with Ethan to help get some of these dates. Um, but Ethan began to, I asked him, so when did you get interested in Bible translation? And he said his, the beginning of his journey was in 2011 when he became a prayer partner with all nations. And as he began to pray, and I think we've heard that already, that prayer has been the core of every, gen, every, every journey. And it, and it will need to continue to be the core of our work if we want this to be sustainable work. It will need to be bathed in prayer. So Ethan became interested in 2011. And in 2012, he met his wife, Lene, and they were married and sometime that year. And he began to become interested in going out and translating with ABT. And he, uh, I remember this part too, that Ethan began to to communicate that with the, with the brothers in our church. And not just once or twice, but there was just a... I felt like Ethan has done a good job even over the years of, of just to continue to communicate his vision. Not in a way, a challenging way, but just asking for counsel and, and looking and, and beginning and, and just working through that. Because remember, I said we were a letting church. And I don't know that that would have been 100%. There, there, was, there were those there that had the concept of sending at that time too, but I wasn't among them. I would probably have been more on the letting side because I didn't understand it was so foreign to, to anything I had ever done. Um, I, 
a little bit about the setting where I grew up wasn't, it seemed like there was a thought of, of yes, you share the gospel, but not necessarily over there because there's been so many failures in missions that we don't want to repeat that, so we're just not going to do it. 2012, all nations came to Cascade Valley, and I well remember that evening as, as uh, we were new in the, our calling onto the leadership team as a deacon, and we kind of felt like we need to go to that meeting that evening just to kind of see what was, uh, what was going on here, what Ethan was really, really getting himself involved in. 2013, um, Ethan and, and uh, about three other brethren, I think Joe Root was along and, and a couple other brethren, I don't exactly remember who it was, it's, yeah, Gordon Boone and maybe uh, Kent Rumble, they took a trip to several areas, just kind of an exploratory trip and I think they maybe went to where Elisha's are at and different places in Mexico, just kind of looking and taking that exploratory trip. And then in 2015, Ethan's, um, they had done their training and they, we sent them as a congregation, um, which did involve, we, we did have a formal sending meeting at our congregation and we, and we sent Ethan out and in Lene into the field. And as, as in the onset, um, Ethan's were, you know, we knew that some of the things that ABT was giving us that we needed to uh, support them financially. And so being a deacon, there was another deacon brother and myself that we began to work with Ethan's and, and, and start to figure out what this monthly support would look like. And, and that was kind of our key focus is, is the financial support from my perspective. I'm, I'm giving you my perspective on all of this. There's other Josh's here and, and Jordan and their perspective might be a little different than mine, but I'm the one up here. So um, in 2018, I think we began to become a little more serious about that and begin to talk among our leadership that, you know, we've sent Ethan's out and, and it's time for another, we felt like there would be time for someone to join them and to full, you know, fill this team more. Ethan's are, I believe, translating New Testament. Is that right? And um, there would be a need. We would like to do that. And so we began to put that word out in our congregation. And uh, Brother Jordan and Sister Jana responded to that, um, that call from God. And so as, as we began to look at sending another team, or another couple, um, we started to look at what a support team looked like. I, th I think Roger gave us a very good description of what that looks like yesterday. We began to look at that. Um, we realized there was a lot of roles that we weren't necessarily filling. So kind of by default, we hadn't been used to this. this the servant body asked me, would you just be the support team leader? Oh, sure. So I began to get involved with that and then and, and, um, Jordan's went to, ended up going in December of 2019 and, and to Mexico and, and our daughter, one of our daughters went down in early 20 to assist Jordan's with the, right after the birth of, the, of a son and I was able to travel with her and spend some time in the area and just get to see it. It really opened my eyes to, to the needs and the cultural. I'd never been out of the country. And so it was a, it was a really momentous trip for me. And, and as time went on, um, as Jordans were in language school, I made another trip with, with some of my daughters. And, and in the meantime of that, in and, and 21, I came to the first I came to church day in 21 here at All Nations. And just hearing, I guess that was very momentous for me. That day, Joel Yoder, he spoke on, uh, on sending churches, sending well. I don't know what the title was, 
but it, it made an impact on me. And, and we, uh, Brother Josh was here at that same time as well, and him and I got together talking about that when we got home, and we ended up having a, an evening with our congregation where we, we got as many together as, as desired to come, and, and we, we spent some time going through that presentation. We, we actually showed that presentation to our congregation, and we have, we have um, another veteran missionary that had spent, Tom Mollers, who had spent 10 years in the DR, and he assisted us with answering questions and just even talking about what it felt like for, for post-field care and all that. And I think it really, really began to, to pick up momentum in our uh, congregation of, of support beyond just the financial. And, of course, we were already doing... Um, at that point, we were doing uh, prayer meetings. Uh, we it just, I think I'll move on here to the next point. I had three points, I didn't fail to tell you that. The first was just kind of the history of getting behind Ethan's vision. And then also the next point being how our support team makes support happen. And then the last point is how all nations fits in. So, um, how our support team makes support happen is just thinking about regular conversations that's, that's had with, um, with our f team members on the field, with our field members. And so we kind of, uh, there is, you know, there's, there's, we reach out, Kent Rumble, a brother in our congregation, is, is he's responsible for being the prayer team leader. And so every, every month, we have a monthly prayer meeting. It was a couple nights ago. We missed out on this one. But how that happens and how that's facilitated is he has a Google document that he keeps current. And Jordan's and Ethan's have access to that. And they go on and, and put their, kind of put needs on there and what, what's going on. Also, Joe and Melanie, they're not part of the ABT as far as sending them from ABT, but they are in Mexico um, working on, in ministry, and they're from our congregation as well. So Joe's um, also posts their needs there on that, their prayer needs, and also their praise and, and rejoicing. They post those on there. And so as we, as we meet for prayer, we usually meet on a week evening um, in, in Kent's home or, or otherwise, and those prayer meetings begin with... Uh, reading just kind of reading the the reports the prayer the praise reports and the prayer needs and then just it's kind of opened up for anyone who's communicated with them to to give brief updates and then we just have a time of uh, of praying on our knees sometimes there's singing and 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 just prayer together so that's kind of how that happens and then somehow some of the another function that we do is just communication from our church to the um, the field members. We have a an email hotline that goes around weekly that, that they get and not sure they always have time to read that. But there is um, and when we have our 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 setting we have quarterly council meetings and so we at those council meetings each quarter of the year, we have uh, each of the team will send in a report, just kind of a little snapshot of what's going on, and then usually the brothers that are in communication with them, which it would, you know, Josh communicates with Jordans, and also another brother, Clayton Brubaker, communicates with Ethan's, and they, they give that report at our council meetings, and then the minutes of the council meeting is sent to them, and, and usually those brothers take care of, um, of communicating with them as well. And there's a couple sisters specifically that communicate with the, with the ladies so that they, just on day-to-day -day things and things that are happening in our congregation, and uh, they help bring a rounded, having the, the ladies also communicate with other ladies also brings a rounded uh, perspective back to us 
And, and speaking of, of that communication, Jordan has communicated with me early on, is, and I serve also not as just the, the support team leader, but also in a mentor role for Jordan. And he and I try to talk for about an hour every two weeks, two to three weeks. It depends. We try to be very conscious of what he's in the middle of and, you know, with him um, there, being there and going out to the village and all that. We, we try to communicate and, we, and it's, we, we try to keep those roles separate of, of support team leader and, and mentor. So when I'm talking with him on these scheduled times, we don't talk about finances unless that comes up. We talk about, we try to talk about heart issues and connecting and, and how things are going with his family and, and how he's relating to his wife and, and just try to be uh, a brother to him. So there was a, as we, uh, as this was given to me as a topic, there was a, uh, a little, uh, heading put in here, I asked Aaron for some direction, and he said, there was a point here, it says, tailoring support to different personalities. I'd just like to share a little story with you of our experience as parents. Um, I, uh, when we became parents, I had kind of a skewed view of that. Our first child was a son. And our second child was a daughter. And so in my own humanistic way of thinking, I thought, well, we've got one of each. The rest of them ought to be like these two. <laughs> but along about our third child, we found out that she is dyslexic. And a dyslexic child, a lot of times I don't know how much you know about dyslexia, I don't know, I don't claim to know everything. But most people think a dyslexic child can't read. That's not the case. You can't teach them to read with conventional methods because they learn different. So in our search and our journey to learn how to teach our daughter to read, someone told, gave us this nugget and that was being fair to your children doesn't mean giving them all the same things. It means giving them what they need. So I only use that illustration as we have two families from our congregation serving in the field. Our heart is, is not to give them each the same thing, but to give them what they need as a couple and as for their personalities. So I just share that with you as encouragement. I, and, and I think another thing about di supporting in different personalities is communicating with the field members well and staying in touch with their individual needs. I don't know that we can say enough about communication. You know, I don't know, there's not a lot of you that knows me very well, but I probably would get labeled as someone who talks a lot. But one thing I've struggled with is learning how to communicate well. So talking a lot isn't always communicating well. Because I feel like in my heart as I've, I've, I've been along this journey, that communication is built on trust. Good communication happens where there's trust. You know, trust happens where there's charity. That means people know you care. And people know that you're listening. You're hearing what they say. This has been a hard one for me. Saying, so, yes, go ahead and talk. But then not being able to really, truly listen. And I think listening is a very, very key part of communication well. And charity is, I think charity, a key point of charity, of love, is truth. Ephesians 4.15 says, but speaking the truth in love, that's where we stop a lot of times. As young men especially, that we stop, we speak the truth in love. We need to get out here and tell them what we think because we love them. 
But it doesn't stop there. Paul didn't stop there. May grow up into Him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So how did Christ love? You know, we heard a little bit yesterday in Roger's talk about how God approached that situation when Elisha was down and out. He didn't just come in there and start smacking him around. He came in there and started caring for him. Jesus says in John 13, 34, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as, in like manner, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And this truth is Jesus. Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the light. That means all truth. Jesus is all truth. He's the only way. In any light you need, the only light that's going to pierce through the darkness that we're dealing with is Jesus Christ. So just briefly here, how all nation fits in is it for in our setting, Aaron and I, Aaron Kreider and I usually have, we usually have a review, just kind of how things are going. We typically try to, try to touch base a minimum of every quarter and sometimes every month. And I appreciate those conversations, just catching up because sometimes he's hearing things and I'm not hearing and sometimes I'm hearing things he's not hearing. And it, it just, it's been a very good relationship and a partnership. I really feel like that, that they care. And the annual partnership reviews is another thing that I really appreciate that it's been a good time of bringing our support team together, which our support team consists of, of eight brothers now and in different roles and um, just bringing those brothers together and, and, and just do, going down through those questions and also I really enjoy Aaron and I meeting with both Jordan's and Ethan separately and then all together. I, I really feel like the honesty and the candid and the, everything is really good. And another thing that, that just how ABT, just this partnership, I really feel like that this, this camp week, this church day and even this explore today, I feel like it's very, very key. So I just want to thank you all for making this happen because these are things that keep top of mind awareness and just not only the, the speaking that goes on here, but just being able to connect with other people who are doing the same thing. And one other thing I, another thing I do want to touch is the, it was mentioned earlier is the church planning course. I don't know how many of you have been through that, but we went through it. We opened it up in our congregation to anyone who wanted to go through it with us. And it started off a little bigger than it finished, but we really finished strong. And we had some really rich discussions and things that, that uh, it was a real blessing for us as a congregation, as many of us as it went through it. And we're looking into ways of, of maybe bringing this to our entire congregation in some way, in maybe a condensed form or something. But uh, I'm really thankful for those those things, the, the work here of all nations, and even the, the financial partnering that's happened with all nations. Just the being able to wrestle through some of those hard dis decisions and, and hard discussions and just the free gifts that we have uh, felt well supported by the ministry here. And I do recognize that, that all nations is a parachurch uh, ministry uh, coming from the setting I did, it was more like, okay, so Ethan's over here, he's, he's with all nations. But as, it, as I worked through some other challenging situations in our congregation that, that I was called to work and be a part of, and working with other parachurch ministries, I realized that, hey, a parachurch ministry is a support for the local church. And we have felt that, and it's really... Um, 
I don't want to say this. It's really give me the energy and the purpose and the courage to get out and lead as a local church and say, this is where we're going. We're planning a church there and using the resources that these brothers are providing. So I...